Welcome back to Beyond Belief, the channel where we explore the mysterious and unexplained corners of our world. Today we journey through Ohio's most chilling hauntings. From abandoned lighthouses to insane asylums, the Buckeye State hides secrets that echo with the whispers of the past. Let's get started. Number 10 South Bass Island Lighthouse Constructed in the waning years of the 19th century, this 2.5-story Queen Anne Victorian lighthouse was more than just a navigational aid. It was a home to its keepers, a sentinel against the perilous Lake Erie fog. With its Fresnel lens piercing through the mist, it promised safety to all who navigated near. Yet for its first keeper, Sam Anderson, this lighthouse was anything but safe. Anderson, a man of peculiar habits, was rumored to have filled the lighthouse's basement with snakes, a hobby that unsettled many. His tenure began under the shadow of a smallpox epidemic in the summer of 1898, a time when fear and uncertainty gripped the island. The epidemic's stress, coupled with the isolation of quarantine, is believed to have driven Anderson to despair. His body was discovered floating in Lake Erie, a grim end to his service and a mystery that has never been fully explained. Was it an accident, or did the strain of his isolation push him to leap from the cliffs? The story took a darker turn when Riley, another lighthouse keeper, succumbed to madness not long after assuming his post. Found wandering aimlessly, he was soon committed to an asylum where he met his end. The lighthouse continued its operation until 1962, but the strange and tragic fates of its keepers have left a mark that time cannot erase. Whisperings of hauntings began as early as 1907, with tales of eerie sensations experienced by visitors, especially near the basement, now sadly closed to the public. Today, the South Bass Island Lighthouse, under the stewardship of The Ohio State University, stands as a monument to its storied past. Visitors are drawn not just by its historical significance, but by the allure of its ghostly legends. While the lighthouse opens its doors to summer guests, those seeking its spectral residence in the autumn's chill are left to gaze from afar, perhaps catching a glimpse of a wandering spirit near the cliffs where Anderson's tale came to its mysterious end. Number 9 Prospect Place Mansion Built in 1856 by the abolitionist George Willison Adams, this 29-room mansion served not just as a family home but as a beacon of hope on the Underground Railroad, guiding countless slaves to freedom. Now listed on both the National Register of Historic Places and the Ohio Underground Railroad Association's compilation of significant sites, Prospect Place harbors stories that echo through its halls. The mansion's legacy is steeped in bravery and benevolence, particularly highlighted by an incident involving a slave bounty hunter. This nefarious figure seeking to reclaim escaped slaves was met with fierce resistance by G.W. Adams and the very individuals he sought to oppress. Legends tell of the confrontation that ensued, leading to the bounty hunter's expulsion and rumored demise at the hands of those he hunted. Today, the barn where this altercation reached its climax is said to be haunted by the malevolent spirit of the bounty hunter with visitors reporting feelings of an ominous presence, unexplained fear, and unseen hands that linger in the shadows. The mansion's basement, a sanctuary for those on the treacherous path to freedom, is home to a more benevolent spirit. A slave woman, succumbing to injuries sustained during her flight, passed away within these walls. Her spirit, however, is said to remain, characterized by an aura of protection and joy that envelops the mansion. Those who have felt her presence describe encounters with a happy entity, watching over Prospect Place with an eternal vigilance born of kindness and compassion. Tragedy also touched the family directly, as seen in the story of William Cox, who married G.W. Adams' daughter, Anna. Cox, a man of wealth and stature, vanished under mysterious circumstances after leaving for a business trip. His disappearance left Anna to face numerous challenges alone, and it is believed that Cox's spirit wanders the mansion, seeking forgiveness and a way to make amends for the hardships his absence caused. Number 8 Ridges Asylum In the serene town of Athens, Ohio, lies a relic of a bygone era, now known as the Ridges but once the Athens Lunatic Asylum. From 1874 to 1993, this sprawling institution was a beacon of hope and despair for many, from Civil War veterans seeking solace to children deemed mentally unwell. Yet beneath its noble intentions, the asylum harbored dark secrets, including the controversial lobotomy procedure and ghostly sightings that chill the spine to this day. Initially occupying a modest 141 acres, the facility's footprint expanded over the years to engulf over a thousand acres, becoming the largest employer in Athens by the 1950s, with a sprawling campus of 78 buildings serving 15 Ohio counties. However, the asylum's legacy is marred by the treatments it administered. Records unearthed by Ohio University reveal a harrowing picture of electroshock therapy, hydrotherapy, and lobotomies performed without consent, reflecting a dark period in the treatment of mental illness. These inhumane practices, coupled with the mysterious circumstances surrounding the patients, 
many of whom were buried in unmarked graves on the property, cast a long shadow over the ridges. The asylum's eerie atmosphere is encapsulated in the tale of Margaret Schilling, a patient whose disappearance in 1978 led to a grim discovery. Her body, found weeks later in an abandoned ward, left a stain on the floor that persists despite attempts to erase it. Her spirit, along with others, is rumored to haunt the building, with sightings of her gazing from the window of the room where she met her untimely end. Even in death, the asylum's inhabitants seem restless. The surrounding cemeteries, home to one 930 souls marked only by numbers, are a hot spot for paranormal activity. Witnesses report shadowy figures darting between the headstones, and an eerie circle of graves is thought to be a meeting spot for witches. These tales of hauntings and despair underline the tragic history of a place meant for healing but remembered for its horrors. If you're enjoying this haunted tour, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We appreciate it so much. We've got more haunted tales ahead and you won't want to miss a single one. If you have a state you'd like us to cover, drop it in the comment section below. Number 7, Fudge Road Bridge. Built in 1913 by the Central States Bridge Company, this bridge, also known as Crybaby Bridge, has become a focal point of local lore, intertwining the tragic with the supernatural. The primary legend that clings to the damp air around Fudge Road is a haunting tale of maternal despair and loss. It is said that in the shadows of the 1800s, a grief-stricken mother engulfed in madness threw her infant from the bridge into the abyss below. Some iterations of the story add a chilling epilogue. The mother, consumed by her actions, took her own life beneath the very bridge that witnessed her unspeakable deed. Locals whisper that if one dares to stand upon the bridge and call out Mama three times into the night, the baby's cries will pierce the silence a sorrowful echo of the past. Another ghostly narrative involves a spectral vehicle that emerges from the ether to chase away the curious and the brave. Legend dictates that parking in the middle of the bridge, turning off your car, flashing your lights three times, and honking twice will summon this phantom pursuer, an eerie sentinel guarding the bridge's secrets. Beyond these spectral tales, Fudge Road Bridge has been touched by real-life tragedy. In 2002, the bridge was the site of a fatal accident involving a semi-truck, a stark reminder of the bridge's tangible dangers. More heartbreakingly, it is linked to the tragic case of Justin Back, a young man whose life was brutally cut short in 2014. The bridge became a footnote in the investigation that followed, a somber marker in the landscape of a community shaken by violence. It is a reminder that behind every legend lies a kernel of truth, a story of human emotion, be it sorrow, fear, or loss. Number six, Licking County Historic Jail. In 1889, the old Licking County Jail, an architectural marvel designed by Joseph Warren Yost, rose in the heart of Ohio. Yost, renowned for his Richardson Romanesque style, crafted a structure that was as imposing as it was secure, resembling a fortress more than a place of incarceration. Built with Millersburg brownstone, its sturdiness was praised, and it quickly became known as one of the most secure jails in the state. The facility was divided into two main sections. The front for the sheriff's residence, providing a homey facade that belied the building's true purpose, and the rear for the prisoners, with 32 cells designed to hold up to 68 inmates. Over the years, however, this capacity was often exceeded, leading to overcrowded conditions that only added to the jail's grim atmosphere. The history of the old Licking County Jail is a tapestry of tragedy and darkness. Among its most harrowing events was the lynching of Carl Etherington in 1910. Etherington, a detective for the Anti-Saloon League, found himself the target of a lynch mob's fury after a raid went awry, leading to a saloon owner's death. The mob's brutal act of vengeance against Etherington, culminating in his hanging from a telephone pole, marked one of the jail's darkest chapters. But the violence within its walls wasn't limited to this singular event. Over the years, the jail witnessed suicides, murders, and deaths ruled as accidental, casting a long shadow over its legacy. The paranormal activity reported at the old Licking County Jail has solidified its reputation as one of Ohio's most haunted locations. Visitors and professional ghost hunters alike have recounted numerous encounters with the supernatural. Apparitions of former inmates and guards are said to roam the hallways, while disembodied voices echo through the cells. The dungeon, in particular, is noted for its oppressive atmosphere and intense paranormal activity, with many visitors refusing to enter or hastily exiting, swearing never to return. Among the most chilling reports are those of physical interactions with unseen forces. Guests have described feeling touches, pushes, and tugs on their clothing with no apparent source. Electronic equipment frequently malfunctions, chairs move of their own accord, and doors slam shut, as if the spirits of the past are determined to make their presence known. The dungeon, known as the most haunted area of the jail, is where the veil between the living and the dead seems thinnest, with visitors reporting an overwhelming sense of dread and the feeling of being watched by malevolent entities. 
Number 5. Saddamsville Rectory Over 120 years old and proudly listed on the National Historic Register, this enigmatic building harbors stories that span the spectrum of human emotion, from devotion to despair. Spanning over 6,000 square feet across four levels, the rectory's architectural elegance is undeniable. From the refined ambience of the first floor parlor, living room, library, and formal dining room, to the servants' quarters connected by a hidden staircase, each room whispers tales of the past. The second level, with its four bedrooms and three bathrooms, connects to a mysterious attic, hinting at secrets untold. The rectory's spectral legacy is closely tied to Father Donald MacLeod, a clergyman whose life was tragically cut short in the late 1800s by an oncoming train. His journey to provide solace to a dying woman ended abruptly, yet many believe his spirit lingers, a guardian of the place he once called home. Visitors and the curious have reported encounters with Father MacLeod's apparition, a testament to the indelible mark he left on Saddamsville. However, not all spirits that roam the rectory's halls are as benign. Dark whispers haunt its history, tales of a priest whose actions betrayed the trust of those he was sworn to protect. The basement, once the scene of a brutal dogfighting ring during the rectory's vacant years in the 1980s, adds a layer of malevolence to the building's already troubled past. It is as if the very walls are imbued with the suffering and anger of souls, both human and animal, trapped in a perpetual cycle of torment. The current owners have experienced firsthand the rectory's unsettling atmosphere, the presence of growling dogs, Unexplained scratches and doors that move of their own volition are just the beginning. Armed with faith, the owner's recitation of the Lord's Prayer sought to quell the unrest, a battle of wills between the living and the unseen. Number 4. Lafayette Hotel Since its inception in 1918, rising from the ashes of the Bellevue Hotel, it has stood as a silent witness to the flow of time, encapsulating within its walls a rich tapestry of history and a touch of the ethereal. The Lafayette Hotel, with its majestic facade, invites guests into a world where history and hospitality intertwine seamlessly. Marietta, the town it calls home, is drenched in river lore, a narrative beautifully complemented by the Ohio River Museum's treasures. Within the hotel, corridors lined with vintage photographs offer a portal into its storied past, each frame a frozen moment from a century of gatherings, celebrations, and whispered secrets. Yet it is not just the tangible history that draws visitors to the Lafayette. The hotel, like many edifices that have weathered the sands of time, is enveloped in tales of the paranormal. The third floor in particular is rumored to be a hive of spectral activity, a domain where the living and the ethereal coexist. Guests speak of encounters with a Victorian lady, her apparition wandering the hallways, her attire a window into an era long gone. There are stories of personal belongings vanishing into thin air, only to be found the next day as if returned by unseen hands. These incidents, while not malevolent, send shivers down the spine, a chilling reminder of the hotel's unseen inhabitants. The allure of the Lafayette Hotel lies not just in its architectural beauty or its place in history, but in the possibility of experiencing something truly beyond the ordinary. Number three, Ohio State Reformatory. Opening its doors in 1890, this penitentiary embarked on a mission to reform first-time offenders through education and trades, a noble endeavor that soon collided with the harsh realities of prison overpopulation and the evolution of criminal incarcerations. As decades passed, the reformatory's walls, initially meant to guide men back to the right path, witnessed the darker facets of human nature. The shift towards housing more serious and violent offenders transformed its corridors, making conflict and disease as much a part of its foundation as the stone it was built from. The overcrowding of the 1960s epitomized this decline, with cells meant for solitary confinements of death row inmates being doubled up, leading to fatal consequences that underscored the urgent need for closure in 1972. The reformatory's history is marred by instances of violence and despair that seem to have left an indelible mark on the very essence of the place. The riot of the late 1930s in the East Cell Block stands as a chilling testament to the extremities of prison discipline, pushing men to the edge of sanity and beyond. The aftermath of such events contributed to the haunted reputation that now envelops the site, with 215 numbered graves standing silently nearby, each a stark reminder of the lives lost to disease, despair, or violence within these walls. The spirits of those who suffered and perished in the Ohio State Reformatory are said to linger, their unrest manifesting in physical interactions with the living, inexplicable cold spots, and the eerie sounds of cell doors slamming shut of their own accord. The road leading to the reformatory adds another layer to its haunted lore, allegedly roamed by the ghost of Phoebe Wise, Mansfield's own hermit and eccentric, whose spirit encapsulates the local legend and mystery that shroud the area. Number 2. Bisman Building the saga of the Bisman Building begins with the journey of the Bisman family from Germany to the United States in 1853. 
a voyage that symbolized hope and the pursuit of prosperity. The Bisman Company, established near the bustling railroad tracks for optimal logistics, became synonymous with quality groceries. From Bisman's Red Band Coffee to hand-rolled Cuban cigars, serving the Mansfield area for nearly a century. Beyond its commercial success, the Bisman Building has etched its place in cinematic history, most notably serving as a pivotal location for the filming of The Shawshank Redemption, transforming a first-floor room into the editor-in-chief's office of the Portland Daily Bugle and its facade into the Brewer Hotel the building transcends its physicality, becoming a silent character in the cult classic film. Yet beneath its historical and cultural significance lies a layer of mystery and spectral intrigue. The building is reputed to be a nexus of paranormal activity, with visitors and employees reporting eerie sensations and ghostly apparitions. One chilling tale recounts the tragic fate of F.W. Simon, a dedicated employee whose life was gruesomely cut short in an elevator accident leaving behind a legacy that some believe lingers in the form of a spectral presence. Perhaps the most haunting narrative tied to the Bisman building is that of a young girl rumored to be buried within its basement. The potential identification of this spirit as Ruthie Bisman, a descendant of the building's original patriarch, deepens the enigma as records of her existence and final resting place remain elusive. The psychic revelation of a little girl's spirit watching from the staircase ignites a quest for answers intertwining the building's physical legacy with the spectral echoes of its past. Number one, Molly Stark Sanatorium. In the heart of Stark County, Ohio, lies the remnants of Molly Stark Sanatorium, a structure that whispers tales of a bygone era. Named after the revered wife of General John Stark, this sanatorium was birthed from necessity, designed to cradle the growing number of tuberculosis patients within its walls. The journey of Molly Stark began with a community's resolve, manifested through a $750,000 bond approved by voters in 1927, setting the stage for a 150-bed haven for the afflicted. Molly Stark's design was a testament to progressive health care, with bedridden patients ascending from the upper echelons of the building to the freedom of the grounds as their health returned. The expansion during Governor Frank Lausch's era marked a significant milestone, not just in capacity, but in the fight against tuberculosis, evidenced by the dramatic decline in deaths from the disease. However, the winds of change brought with them antibiotics, rendering specialized asylums obsolete. Molly Stark's transformation into a general hospital was a brief chapter before its eventual closure in 1995, leaving behind a shell filled with memories and questions about its future. Despite various proposals, the daunting costs of asbestos removal and rehabilitation led to its acquisition by the county park board for a mere dollar, turning it into a space for the community, albeit haunted by its past. Since its closure, Molly Stark Sanatorium has become a siren call for urban explorers and paranormal enthusiasts drawn by tales of apparitions, orbs, and disembodied voices. The lower levels in particular hold a palpable tension, a stark contrast to their intended purpose for the healthiest patients. The sanatorium's heavy air, laden with the echoes of those who once roamed its halls, beckons the curious and the brave. Thanks for joining us on this ghostly journey through Ohio. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos from Beyond Belief. It helps out a lot. Thank you to all of our subscribers. Until next time, guys, keep exploring the unexplained.